My name is Simran Singh, and I'm the first affirmative speaker. On August 20th, 2012, during his campaign for his second term in office, reporter Chuck Todd asked President Obama whether he envisioned using U.S. military intervention in Syria for the safekeeping of chemical weapons, and if he was confident that the chemical weapons are safe. Quote President Obama, We have been very clear to the Assad regime, but also to other players on the ground, that a red line for us is if we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. That would change my calculus, that would change my equation. Contention 1. On August 21st, 2013, President Assad used surface-to-surface -surface rockets to launch a chemical weapons attack, releasing sarin gas in the suburbs of Syrian capital, Damascus, leaving 1,400 innocent civilians dead, which includes women and children. Subpart 8. On August 21st, 2013, Assad gassed to death over 1,000 people, leaving men, women, and children foaming at the mouth, gasping for air before dying in asphyxiation. Source, United States President Barack Obama, addressed to the nation on Syria, given on September 10, 2013. The situation profoundly changed, though, on August 21st, when Assad's <coughs> government used gas to death over 1,000 people, including hundreds of children. The images from this massacre are sickening. Men, women, and children lying in rows, killed by poison gas, others foaming at the mouth, gasping for breath, a father clutching his dead children, imploring them to get up and walk. On that terrible night, the world saw in gruesome detail the terrible nature of chemical weapons and why the overwhelming majority of humanity has declared them off limits. A crime against humanity and a violation of the laws of war. Subpoint B. There is no doubt that Syrian President Assad is responsible for the use of chemical weapons against his opposition. Source Greg Thielman and Daryl G. Kimball, journalists with Arms Control Now, Article, hard evidence from the UN inspectors points to Assad's chemical weapon use, posted September 16, 2013. The most significant new information appears to be the definitive evidence of sarin in the rocket fragments and the blood and urine samples from patients. Descriptions of 140 millimeter and 330 millimeter rockets used in the attack are largely consistent with the previous report of Human Rights Watch, but the meticulous calculations from the UN inspectors provides an azimuth information for two of the rockets, which includes the attack came, which indicate that attack came from government control areas to the west and the northwest. Subpoint C, President Assad's use of chemical weapons is also a way to test America's resolve, resolve publicly to the world. Source, Robert Satloff, Executive Director of Washington Institute for Near East Policy. The administration now faces a second test in Syria where Bashar al-Assad regime and its Iranian sponsors apparently believe they can put a stake through the heart of U.S. power and prestige in the region by testing the president's red line on the use of chemical weapons. For the Assad, large-scale use of chemical weapons serves multiple ends. It demoralizes the rebels, underscores the importance of their external financiers and suppliers, and confirms to Assad that chemical weapons used make Syria, not Iran's nuclear facility, the battlefield to test American resolve. So point D, by not responding to Assad's use of chemical weapons and blatant violation of the president's red line policy, U.S. resolves lose credibility to rogue states such as North Korea. Source Bruce Kling Klinger, an, ad an agent who worked 20 years at the Central in Intelligence Agency and the Defense Intelligence Agency. To the degree that North Korea can penetrate this confusing political morass, the regime is probably hardened by signs of a declining American willingness to intervene overseas even when confronted by evidence of use of mass, weapons of mass destruction. Pyongyang will conclude that President Obama's bold rhetoric, including that directed against North Korea, was unlikely to be backed with significant military action. The regime will incorporate this perceived American passivity into its decision-making in the future confrontations with Washington and Seoul. So point E, the last time North Korea went on the offensive, a war broke loose drawing in the United States. Uh, source, History Channel, The Korean War, 25 June 1950 to 27 July 1953. On July 25, 1950, the Korean War began when some 75,000 soldiers from the North Korean People's Army poured across the 38th parallel, the boundary between Soviet-backed Democratic Republic of, to the, of Korea to the North and pro-Western Republic Korea to the South. The invasion was first military action of the Cold War. By July, American troops had entered the war on South Korea's behalf. As far as American officials were concerned, it was a war against the forces, and after some early back and forth, the fighting stalled, and casualties mounted to nothing to show for them. Contention 2. The U.S. At at must attack Assad regime, his military capabilities, and his chemical weapons stockpiles to, to, to base on principle, to deter the Assad regime, as well as other rogue states, from using weapons of mass destruction. So, point A, Rogue countries like North Korea take cues from past actions of U.S. foreign policy. Source Bruce Klinger uh, previously stated. 
Hardened North, hard North Korean resolve to retain nukes, Pyongyang closely studies American foreign policy, taking cures from past actions in Yugoslavia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya. During the initial six weeks of U.S. attack on Iraq, North Korea leader Kim Jong II hid from public view, thinking North Korea may be next on George W. Bush's hit list. So point B, the U.S. needs to attack Assad and his chemical weapon depots because American prestige is on the line. Source, Michael Rubin, a former Pentagon official who's made the research in the Middle East and special focus on Iran, Turkey, and politics, instructs senior Middle East officers deploying Middle East. My position is that we need to strike at the chemical weapon depots and the, and the units that, which launched the attack. Any unit which has launched chemical weapons on the government side, simply because American prestige is line. Perhaps it's unfortunate, but there's no way President Obama can walk back from the red line he so clearly declared. And I stand open for a cross -examination. In um, contention number one, uh, sub point A, can you please uh, give me as to solid evidence that President Obama um, gave that Assad actually did commit the uh, rocket attacks? Um, well, in contention sub point A, contention one, sub point A, it says uh, on August twenty first when Assad's government gassed to death over a thousand people. So in this specific point itself, we do not have any evidence, but it clearly states that it's Assad's government. Okay, so no solid evidence in that statement. In that statement, no. Okay. Uh, Subpoint B, uh, attack came from government-controlled areas in contention number one. Um, can you, in same same regard, can you give me proof within that statement, uh, solid evidence that, that it was Assad that launched the attack and actually spoke for the attack? Um, in that statement, there is no proof that it was a thought. Just, just in that statement. Thank you. Uh, sub point C. Uh, did you have a source for testing America's resolve? I only heard a author. In sub point C, right here. Yes. Um, the source was Robert Satliff, Executive Director, Washington Institute of New East. The Washington. author. Can you uh, quote me where you found the quote from? No. Okay. Uh, let's see. In um, contention two, sub point C. Or I'm sorry. Contention one, sub point E. The Korean War. Correct. Do you, can you tell me exactly how many American lives were lost in the Korean War? Um, no, I do not have evidence in that point. Okay, it's common knowledge that over 30,000 Americans lost their life in that war. 90,000 people in general lost their life in that war. Um, in contention to subpoint A and subpoint B, can you tell me anything different from the uh, top points that you had? Uh, where you were both speaking not only about, um, let's see, America's resolve, but also the red line. Seems like those are repeats from contention one. And uh, contention is up on A and B? Yes. Well, 